Hello, hello. Welcome everyone. I hope the stream's up and I hope you're listening. Well, I'm Aragon and I'm here to cast. I'm here to cast this third game of the season for Ulti Boys. And they're playing against Murther Mountains. Now, apart from Murther Mountains' formidable name, I've heard that they're potentially a formidable team as well. I've already seen they've won a game, just like AGSB Esports, and so we might come up against tougher competition than we've seen in the past. Now, we're getting into game now. We're going to see who are these teams going to draft? What champions do we want to see? I'm interested because I want to see a high stakes game here. This is a team that really ulti boys have to beat this team to be able to cement themselves as a good team in this league. And we come out with a Darius and a Yasuo ban at the beginning of the banning phase. And what I really want to get across is I think this game, obviously we've got five members on both teams. I'm interested in seeing a high stakes match. I'm interested in seeing lots of excitement, lots of action going on. And I'm also excited in seeing high tension. And I think we're probably going to get that from this game. Murder Mountains versus AGSB Esports. I'm excited and I hope you are as well for this game as we come out with the third bands across the board with that final Nasus and Zed. And Zaya for Vilfire, his signature Zaya pick that we know he's strong on. He is good at that pick. And now let's see what are Murder Mountains going to pick in response to that Zaya or so that AGSB cannot pick it up instead. Oh, a Khan. Now that, I would suggest, is possibly the best pick that they could have went to. Deny the Khan from AGSB Esports. NHX cannot get his hands on that champion now. And now they're not getting that duo compatibility that AGSB Esports might have wanted to have. Now we've got a Gragas coming in. I presume this is a Gragas jungle if they do lock it in for AGSB Esports, although of course we have seen some Gragas supports in Worlds usually paired up with the Yasuo that has been banned, and a Nivio on the side of um, Murther Mountains, which I didn't mention. Obviously, usually that's a champion that not many people are entirely confident on, but I presume that their mid laner is One second left on this pick, and that's the guy's pick. Over to AGSB Esports, we have a strong team coming out on both teams now with this Mordekaiser Hover. This is shaping up to be an exciting game because these are exciting champion picks. High, high action is what I'm expecting to see. Especially with the likes of the Khan, the likes of Mordekaiser Eyes. A clad ban coming out from the side of Murder Mountains. I wouldn't be able to predict who they want to ban against the side of Murder Mountains. And it looks like it did take them a long time to decide on that Warwick ban for the jungler. Coming out to the final pick of the ban phase. Before we get onto the second pick phase in this tournament draft between Murder Mountains and AGSB Esports. A Nautilus ban. Of course, that's not going to be, or I wouldn't presume that they wanted that to be the mid Nautilus as Doinby showed in Worlds this weekend against G2, unfortunately. 
when G2 lost, but that is the Nautilus taken away from the side of NHX123. And so that's the Volley Bear for Mother. Rom for NHX, and now we're just having to round this out with the top laner. Unless Ryze wants to go in top, and we're going to see a mid laner, but I presume we're seeing the top laner here to go against the Mordekaiser. Of course, Kled was banned. Kled could be good against the Mordekaiser. Kled was banned. I'm interested to see who AGSP want to pick against the Mordekaiser, and it's the Gnar. He can really get that poke across in the lane. He can annoy the Mordekaiser, although if he gets caught up in the claw of Mordekaiser, if he gets caught up in that Death's Grasp, then he might be saying night-night to the small Yordle. Ash to round out the co the team composition for Murtha, they're going with this utility-driven ADC. Um, a stark contrast, I would suggest, from their support, the Rakan, who's he wants to go in, he wants to engage, he wants to cause fights, and that's something that I imagine champions like the Volley Bear, like the Mordekaiser, will be very happy to follow up on, uh, on the engage of a Rakan. Similarly, Rakan can help disengage, along with Anivia, he can help disengage from the massive teamfight potential of AGSB Esports, and that's what I'm seeing in this team. Picks like the Gnar, the Gragas, the Rise, every single champion on the side of AGSB Esports, I would suggest is insane at team fighting. They've got a lot of AoE um, crowd control, AoE damage. Just look at the ults of Braum, look at the ults of Gnar, of Gragas. They're really there to pack a punch in these team fights, and that's what I'm excited for in this game against Murtha today. I want to see what kind of tricks they're able to pull out the bag as we're waiting for the spectator delay, of course. I want to see what fights, um, what exciting fights we're going to witness today. And I hope that you guys are excited as well for what could be, or what's hopefully, a high action game. So... We can just look at this uh, bot lane matchup at the moment. We can look at the... There's a Braum Zaya against a Rakan and Ash. Of course, what you'd expect from a compatibility point of view is the other way around. Zaya Rakan versus Ash Braum. Especially the utility of Ash, the disengage of Braum. But combined with Braum's passive, Zaya can really get a lot of damage out. She can combine the stun from Braum's passive with her own root. She can get a lot of CC down, but that's not to say that the enemy side spot lane is lacking in CC at all. It definitely isn't. We've got, of course, the perpetual crowd control coming from Ash, her auto attacks, coming from her ultimate even, even after we hit level 6. Um, of course, we've also got, not to mention, the perpetual crowd control, or not the perpetual crowd control, but the massive crowd control potential that Rakan can bring into these fights, or perhaps even to disengage every time Zyo and Braum might want to get onto that um, relatively weak Ash. Um, we can see a disengage from Rakan, we can see a grand entrance from him, we can see his ultimate go down and stop them from being able to being able to attack Ash in those crucial moments of the fight. And then of course, as the game gets later on, as they get into more team fights, we can see champions like the Volley Bear really just tanking a lot for the team and Anivia, Mordekaiser. Even Ash at that point is able to start pumping out real damage um, onto the side of Ulti Boys, uh, Ulti Boys' team that does revolve a lot around area of effect, team fight damage, area of effect, team fight crowd control. And so the spectator delay is going now. We're going to start getting into game and we're going to start to see how this game pans out, and whether it pans out in such an exciting way 
that we really want to expect from this game. Well, the game started now. Of course, after the spectator delay, we're just waiting to see the champions spawn in after these initial few seconds and particularly where they start are we going to see some level one action which would i think would be very exciting to see although of course that can't be promised Well, it looks like almost, or at least four out of five of Merva are congregating around the bot side jungle. And we're also seeing a similar congregation around the bot side jungle on AGSB Esports. Although now Rise, Nar heading up towards that top side. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what um, Rise wants to do around that blue. I presume they're just trying to protect it from potential invades just as Anivia is on Murther's side, just protecting from an invade from Lemon Curd, as Lemon Curd walks up with the rest of the team. I don't think they've been spotted yet by Anivia, but Anivia puts down the ward and is starting to walk back to lane. Lemon Curd spotted on the ward, and he's not going to be stunned by the Q from Anivia. Now this is a generous leash from the bot side of AGSB Esports as we're just getting into this level 1 state, getting to this first wave of minions and of course no shenanigans, unfortunately no invades at the beginning of the game. A few Bits of damage coming out, exchanged cues from the bot side. Nothing major, just classic stuff. The kind of thing you'd expect from this bot lane. But, I would suggest that Vilfire is being bullied a bit in this level 1 by Rakan. Hopefully, NHX can match that with his um, significant presence on the brawl. Show the scoreboard for you. Of course, just standard starting items. We're not going to see anything strange yet. Um, standard CSing, I will swap these around for you just to make it easier. And this is an early engage from the Rakan, but I think he's been caught out. That is Ash going down already. This is the thing. Ash early, really weak. And now Rakan running away with the red buff slow on him. He's just able to get out. But that is a beautiful judgment from Lemon Curd to come in at that point. Just at the same time as MJA was thinking, this is a perfect time for me to engage with the grand entrance of Rakan. He engages. He gets caught out by the Gragas. Unfortunately, um, the mobility of Rakan allows him to escape whilst Ash does get caught in the crossfire and Ash goes down. That is first blood over to ADSB Esports. Now, that's very fortunate. That relieves some pressure from the bottom lane of ADSB Esports. They were getting a bit bullied by the Rakan, of course. If Lemon Curd wasn't there, we can imagine there might have been a flash coming out from Vilfire. Just as we see another engage coming with the grand entrance from Rakan. He gets tagged with the passive from Braum. That's a, a brief stun 
under the champion. But that's all that's going to happen in that fight, nothing more. But this is what I'm saying. With Khan is able to consistently get engages off, and at some point you can imagine that Vilfi is going to have to react, and he's going to have to use that flash, he's going to have to potentially use that heal, and that's why it's so good that Lemon Curd was able to get them that kill on the board so early on. The ulti boys are now able to relieve some pressure from that point, from that point on the bottom lane, and then Vilfire's Zaya can start to get fed and can start to get money and can start to do damage. Unfortunately, Nah just unable to hit the W, but Lemon Curd is everywhere, and I can imagine Ryze is going to get the root off here, and that's so close to the death of Volley Bear, he just dies, and now that is two kills on the board for AGSB Esports. As again, the bot lane being pushed under tower, the pressure's been relieved, but they are still getting pushed in by Ash and Rakan. Of course, though, you look at the CS, Ash died, Ash is unable to, she's now 12 CS below Vilfire. Vilfire is really carrying this lead in CS along with his lead and kills. You've just got a bit more fighting in top. Of course, Mordecai's has already reached level 6. Nars not quite there, although I imagine he is there very shortly. He is there now. And we've seen a bit of action. I'm excited by this game. I, I'm excited by the prospects of what this game can bring us. And I've already been satisfied by a lot of things as we come into a fight now. Mordecai's are ult. He gets hit by the Death's Grasp from Mordekaiser, but I think that's going to be all she wrote for Mordekaiser as he gets hit by the Boulder Toss from Nar. Now that is three early, early kills. Six minutes and under three kills. And Exhaust comes out from NHX. And that's a beautiful disengage from MJA. But I think he's going to be hit by the passive from Braum. He's going to get stunned up. And now he just needs a bit more damage. NHX gets the Winter's Bite across. And that's a kill. A fourth kill. Forty boys. Now they are going to start running away with the game at this point. Unless Murder Mountains are able to do something in return. They really need to retaliate. The problem is for their team. As... Let me hold my tongue here. Lemon Curd with a beautiful, a beautiful body slam onto the Volley Bear. The Volley Bear dies, and now that's his second death of the game. The bot lane also has two deaths between them. Death's Grasp for Mordekaiser, but that is a wallop. Back onto him to stun him, to stop him from being able to further engage on that champion, and... Nivea and Rise, of course, both mana-hungry champs. They're both running out of that uh, precious resource for them. We're going to have to start seeing them take blue buffs from the jungler. But, of course, for Volibear, he really needs some CS. He really needs some experience um, that he's being rid of by Lemon Curd, who really is just everywhere this game. I really have to praise that player for what he's being able to do this game. He's just able to create advantages across the map for Murder. Uh, not for Murther, sorry, for AGSB Esports against Murther. And now Ash kind of in a position where she could be altered by Lemon Curd. Lemon Curd's not going to go for it. But that was potentially very bad. That could have potentially been very bad for Murther with Ash being caught out. And then that would have been another kill for them. As we still see Vilfire still 1-0-1, 2-0-1 on the Braum. And also... Vilfire with an almost 20 CS lead up on his ADC opponent. A bit more fighting going on in this bottom lane. And in the top lane, the only boring lane we've seen is the mid lane. Nothing's really happened there. I can't imagine that we would have much fighting going on with an Irvia versus Rise as the ultimate comes out from Vilfire. This is going to be Ash rooted up. I can only imagine as the ult comes through from Lemon Curd. And now it's just Rakan running back. The Winter's Bite catches onto Rakan as now um, Mordekaiser resulted onto Nar. Volibear unable to attack him in that ult. 
but now I think Volley Bear's bit off a bit more than he can chew. That's him dead, and now Mordekaiser on low health. We could see Nar trying to get a kill onto him. He's just unable to catch up, but that is the second kill. That's a double kill for Nar onto that. That is a 2v1 from Nar. He's 75 CS to Mordekaiser's 40, and unfortunately, that's now the third death for Volley Bear. Volley Bears just isn't having a good game today with Lemon Curd able to stop him from being able to get the necessary leads he has to as Volley Bear. This is some beautiful play from AGSB Esports and exactly the kind of thing I wanted to see from this game. I wouldn't say it's a stomp, but what I'd say is that they got a lead early on and now they're just running away with it because of these leads that Lemon Curd's able to get them just as MJA stopped the recall from Vilfire but that is awful for him as he get has to resort to get out but now Ignite onto Rise unable to get the kill that's no mana from Brannigan no mana and he's unable to get the kill unfortunately for him but I would say that going back to that play before with Rakan stopping the recall I think that's not necessarily the best thing to do as Lemon Curd is now here. I'm afraid MJ is just going to die to that red buff. Ash again has to run away. That's now four combined deaths for the Murthy, for the Murther bot lane. <laughs> and this might be a solo kill onto the Mordekaiser from this now ultra fed Nar. That's 5 0. Oh, and we might even see a dead Ash here as well, as that's a lovely ult from Lemon Curd to give that kill. Over to Vilfire's now also very strong Zaya. That's a 5 0 bot lane. That's a 5 0 top lane um, for AGSB Esports. And although Lemon Curd only has one of those kills, I'd re I've really got to give it to him for being able to consistently be at the right place at the right time, able to get these leads for AGSB Esports, and now it's difficult, it's really difficult for Murther to do anything to take this back. This is at 11 or 12 minutes in the game, we're now at a 6k gold lead in favour of AGSB Esports, and I'm afraid that something really miraculous is now going to have to come out from Murther Mountains to be able to get this game in a state where though it's malleable for them, where they're actually able to do something with it, rather than just conceding the game over to AGSB Esports. Again, just a few trades in the mid lane. We've not really seen much from that lane. You're not you don't really expect to see much from the lane rise against Anivia. They're just going to farm up. We see a few ults here and there from Anivia, just getting CS, but nothing major, nothing like what we've seen on the top and bot lanes, which is just main mania, constant mania. There's always things going on. Again, 11 kills in almost as many minutes. Um, and... I, th I can only imagine that the game's going to continue to be exciting. What I really want to look at now is how Murther are able to regain an advantage, how they're able to get themselves back into the game, as I can only imagine the passive gets procced from Brannigan here as we get another solo kill onto Mordekaiser, and that's a double kill from Lemon Curd onto Anivia, and another kill onto a Khan in the bot lane. There's so many things going on. Now, if this game isn't hype, and if this game doesn't have action in it, I don't know what does, because this is exciting. That's an ace from AGSB Esports. Those fights were beautiful from all sides. We saw a great solo kill from Nar onto Mordekaiser. We saw a great pick with the ult from Lemon Curd onto the Anivia, get him out from under his tower so that when he goes into passive, they're still able to attack it. Volley Bear, unfortunately, then came up to protect the Anivia, and that didn't quite work for him, as Volley Bear then just died as well. And of course, there was then the bottom lane 2v2 uh, kills, so then it ended up being the ace. Now, let's see, can Volley Bear get out? Volley Bear is able to get out, 
Mordekaiser is just being bullied by this Gnar, I'm afraid. This 6 and 0 Gnar, there's not much you can do against that. Um, whether in Mini or Mega Four. Now we're going to see the second Drake of the game for Ulti Boys. As I say, they get a lead, they run away with it. AGSB Esports, they're proving themselves to be really good at this. And I would say by no means have Mertha proved themselves to be a bad team. I would just suggest that AGSB Esports have proved themselves to be an exceptional team. Of course there have been some misplays and I'm not here to say that Merva have not misplayed, of course they have misplayed, but AGSB have been able to always capitalise on those misplays on those misplays constantly throughout the game. And now at 15 minutes we're seeing an inhib tower take from Nar. Now Nar's got three on him. I can imagine he will be able to get out of this. But as the ultimate is procced from Volley Bear. This might be the first kill from Murtha. That is a 1,000 gold shot down onto Volley Bear. And now let's see if that's exactly what Murtha needed to be able to potentially start making their way back into this game. Although I'd suggest that perhaps Volley Bear is the wrong champion to get that bounty if it had been put on someone like a Nivea. Um, especially as Anivia has 126 CS, she has almost the most CS in the game, bar one, bar just one CS, and also by the fact that Anivia only has one death. Anivia could definitely be the one to do something for Murtha, and so unfortunately if Anivia had got that bounty rather than Volley, we could perhaps see more from Murtha. I'm not sure what Volley as a champion is able to do with that 1000 gold, as the frozen mallet just makes it impossible for Mordekaiser to outrun or run away from the Gnar, who's now just 8 and 1. Um, a failed body slam from the Gragas will mean that he doesn't get the engage he wanted, but it doesn't really matter. A bit of BM from him with the recall. They get the other kill onto Volley Bear. And now that's an 0 and 6 Mordekaiser. That's a 1 and 5 Volley Bear from Mother Mountains. This isn't exactly what you wanted to see for this game. I really want to see is Rakan going to start engaging here? Is Rakan going to start doing something? Or is. Are we just going to see both of these bot laners here just die instantly from the massive damage from Vilfire? He's just pumping out damage and I'm afraid that's going to probably be the death of Mordekaiser right now as he ulted Nar and as we know he has no capacity to be able to 1v1 against the 9 and 1 Nar. Now, I will say, Ulti Boy's in a bit of a, a bad spot here, as they're in the middle of Murder's base. Uh, Lemon Curd taking a few tower shots, that's a stopwatch just to stop that tower shot. But I don't think Murder are actually going to be able to capitalise on the fact that they're in a bad position, but saying that, that is a nice ultimate from Rakan, and they're not rooted. That's another grand entrance. Beautiful grand entrance. But I don't think that that's going to be enough for Murder. They just get one shot by the 25 kill at 18 minute AGSB Esports. They just get one shot. And I have to commend the Rakan for his trying. He really got a good ultimate off there. He really got a good, got a good grand entrance off there but there was no damage follow-up from his team, simply because they don't have it. They don't have the items they need to be able to follow up on the damage. And so what we get is we just have crowd controls, crowd controlled AGSB members who just wait a few seconds for that crowd control to wear off, and then they're basically able to one-shot murder. And I can imagine that we're not going to be seeing much left of this game between the two teams as AGSB are just running away with it, really. A bit of downtime for the two teams, like the dragon is spawning. 
um, soon, and I can imagine that's only going to be a pickup for AGSB, as they really want to close out this game. Baron is also spawning in about a minute, in about 30 seconds now, in fact, and it would probably be wise from AGSB to run from this mountain drake, which will allow them to take Baron quicker, and run straight to Baron. I can't imagine there's much that Murther can do to stop them at this Baron. In fact, I would suggest that by do them doing Baron here, Murther either concedes and grants them Baron, or Murther has to come and fight them at Baron, and if Murther comes to fight them at Baron, then Murther dies. Simply, it's Murther are unable to have a 5v5 team fight against AGSB, and so as we as we can predict, really, Murther are just going to appreciate that and concede the Baron to AGSB Esports. And now this is simply a case of AGSB just running through the base as unfortunately Volibear, he's had enough. He knows he's just trying to take the red buff and he sees AGSB Esports come, <laughs> come around the wall with the newly found Baron buff. There's really not much he can do there. He just has to grant them the kill against him again. Rakan trying to do something, he just can't. Mordekaiser is going to die. I can only imagine the ace here as Anivia is the only one left standing. Anivia with 200 CS, by far the most CS in the game, but unable to carry the team. And that's going to be, unfortunately, the second death for Anivia, as Anivia just isn't able to do anything for this team. And that is going to be a commanding win from AGSB Esports, going 31 to 1 in 21 minutes against Murther Mountains. Now I asked for an exciting game. Now I don't know about you guys, but I think that that game was certainly very exciting. Well, I'm afraid that's probably going to have to be it for this. And I hope that everyone enjoyed that game as much as I enjoyed that watching that game and casting that game. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week.